Да.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين حضرت عمر رضي الله عنه I was discussing the subject of Hazrat Umar bin Khattab his excellencies and his biography. Hinsa bin Umar us, tells us about Hazrat Umar as being a, a person who was not engaged so much in the world. One time this was a daughter who asked the father and he said, O oh, Amir Mu'minin, lead of the faithful. And another, in another narration, it, ca it comes that he said, Oh, my father, God has uh, expounded bounties upon you. He has given you a lot of victories. He has given you wealth. Why don't you enjoy the wealth? Why don't you take the best of food, soft food? Why don't you wear the best clothes? And Hazrat Umar bin Khattab in response said, require a decision about this and um, don't you remember don't you know that uh, we spent some time in the time of the holy prophet for three weeks without eating and then Hazrat Hafswa was reminded by the by the father Hazrat Umar and then she was able to remember what happened and then Hazrat Umar said that as far as I have energy in me, as far as I continue to have enough energy, I will enjoy, I will follow the, the life of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and his companions so that I may share the benefits in the hereafter. It also comes in another narration that Hazrat Umar told Hazrat Hafsa, O oh, Hafsa bint Umar, O oh, my daughter Hafsa, of course you've wished the best for me and you have given me a, an opinion, you have given me a view, and maybe this is good in view of the nation, but this is not better for me. But uh, my people and my relatives have only the rights upon me, upon my wealth. But as far as the religious affairs are concerned, as far as the wealth of the the wealth for Baitul is concerned, you have no right to discuss that. And bin Khayma Hafsa says that Hazrat Hafsa and Hazrat Abdullah and all other people, they came to Hazrat Umar and then they discussed him and then said, oh, if you eat a good uh, good food, then you'll, be, uh, you'll have enough energy to, eat, to perform your duties. And then Hazrat Umar inquired that, is this your general consensus? Is this your general opinion, all of you? And then Hazrat, when they responded that yes, then Hazrat Umar said, now I understand your wishes and understand your request. But your friends, referring to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and Hazrat Abu Bakr, he has left us on a certain way, on a certain practice, that if I, if I diverge away from that practice, from that way, then I won't be able to achieve the goals. Hazrat Muslim Mahmoud further discussing this point says that the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, was the time of fear and a time of tribulation. We can learn a lot from the example of the Holy Prophet and his companions. The the practice of the Holy Prophet and his advice was, and the advice he left was, that when eating you don't eat more than one soup, one type of soup when you are having a meal. Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud may Allah be pleased with him. He's discussing this in a sermon and this was in Tark Jadid and refers to, this was in regards with Tark Jadid. Furthermore he says, 
that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam he, the the guidance is that we should not eat more than one soup or one type of we should only enjoy one type at a, at each meal. Rather, it comes that uh, the Sahaba, the the companions, they they went to extreme, and then even some of them they just used to enjoy just uh, uh, salt. And to an extent, one side, on one time, people were objecting that they say that the Holy Prophet only said only that you can only eat one meal. But the Hazrat Umar responded, he said, uh, the soup and the food combined together makes it a meal. It's not different type of soups. And the action of Hazrat Umar of just keeping the minimum of food was just following the example of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. It is quite likely and probable that the wish of the Holy Prophet ﷺ was, was this that seeing that the life of the the companions requires to live a life of simplicity then it was emphasized during the time of the holy prophet and uh, the second caliph says muslim Maud, he say i'm not demanding that you should not you should not um, you should only enjoy your food with only salt and maybe some pickles then it means that my demand of saying that maybe that um, I, I will be pronouncing the New Year of Takjadid and uh, after three years then we can change the guidelines but anyone who wants to join us in this fight should take this vow that from now on will follow the example of the companions of the Holy Prophet that they will eat only one type of suit with the food it doesn't mean that you only eat only chapati or roti without soup it is or it is it is either you eat one meal, one type of food, and one soup. And this was a guideline which was given by the second caliph so that people can be able to contribute towards Tariq Jadid. These conditions, when they changed after three years, conditions also changed. Even in our time today, it's a different condition. But we should not be extravagant, even though we enjoy all the comforts of uh, our lives today. As a Muslim, I would when when explaining the the bias walladhina lam lam yusrifu wa lam yaqtulu wa kana bayna dhalika qawama walladhina idha anfaqu lam yusrifu wa lam wa lam yaqturu wa kana bayna dhalika qawama when making a commentary of this verse the second caliph said that allah says that if anyone wants to be a true servant of god the condition for such a person is that when you are spending your wealth, when you are spending your money, you should put, put one point in, in, in your mind that you should not be extravagant, one, and you should not be also extravagant in your food only to have enough to keep, you, to, to keep your energy running. And also dressing, is, you should not be extravagant only to cover your nakedness and to be, to be decent enough. And it is said that one one time Hazrat Umar went to Syria, and some of the companions were were wearing silk silk. And of course, this uh, it is maybe it was um, like you see it was a lining, some clothes which had a, a silk lining inside. Otherwise, it is not allowed for a man to wear silk clothes unless you are sick. And Hazrat Umar didn't like this. And then he said, "Do you wish to be wearing silk clothes?" And then one of them from among the comp the companions removed his uh, cloth, and then he said that there was a, a very we, we are not wearing this silk. There was a lot of wool inside. He said, we, we're not wearing this because we like it. It is just because this is how they dress in this country. And we, we, they're used to seeing the people who are wealthy. And we, we dress according to the tradition. Otherwise, these don't affect our status. So the practice of the companions explains enough what extremism is what extravagancy is that you should not spend more than what you need and you should not just be there to show off furthermore 
Allah says that the Ibadur Rahman, the people of Allah, Allah's servants are those when they are spending their wealth, they do not expend for showing off or to be extravagant in their expenditure. Rather, this should not even spend, stop you to spend where you have to give or where you have to spend. And you have to, to be balanced in your expenditure and your expenses. You have to keep the profits or the benefit of the expense you're making. And it should not be against the wishes of God. And this should not stop you to, to offer what you're supposed to do, to spend where you're supposed to spend. So this, the order is to spend. But some of them, they, they're extravagant or they, are, they become misery. They don't keep a balance. But Hazrat Umar was not was against showing off, even in clothes, that even did not wish for even an enemy that they should dress in a way where they, they are dressing extravagantly. And one on one occasion, Hormuzan came. And of course, we've, we've got a detail of this. And of course, I've talked about this. I've discussed this in my free, previous sermons. That on, but I, I further remind you, in order to clarify my explanation today, that um, the, one of um, Hormuzan had uh, thrown the weapons. And then when they surrendered everything to the Muslims, and then he, he, was, uh, he, sent, he sent an envoy, an emissary before entering. The person who was taking him into, into Medina, he, he made him wear a silk cloth so that the, he can be recognized by Hazrat Umar and also the companions of Medina. But when he reached in front of Hazrat Umar, then Hazrat Umar inquired that, are you Hormuzan? And then he said, yes. And then Hazrat Umar, he looked at his dress and then he said, I seek refuge of Allah from hell and I seek Allah's uh, assistance and support. And the convoy said that this is Hormuzan, you, you, should, you should talk to him. And then Hazrat um, Umar said that until he down dress, when he takes away all the ornaments and uh, dress down a bit, then Hazrat Umar was able to speak to him. This shows the simplicity of Hazrat Umar. And we want to talk about his piety and his simplicity. Uh, since we have seen this, there's also another incident from Urwa, and Urwa says that I was, I had seen someone carrying a water skin, and then I said, Oh, Amir Mu'minin, this doesn't befit you, that, that, um, that water should be collected in this way. And then following this, when I see people coming, people coming to me in in groups I didn't want to have any pride in me and then that's why I myself tried to lift the water skin myself in fact Hazrat Umar took the water skin and then carried it himself another companion also says that we were coming from from Mecca until when we reached at Wat Ghan with Hazrat Umar Zajnan it is about 25 miles away from Mecca and the narrator said that Hazrat Umar said at that, that occasion that at this at this place I remember the time when my father Khattab had uh, herds of uh, of camels and he was a very hard person I used to carry wood on these um, camels and I used to take them also to graze around today now people come from far and wide to my place and and of course it's a cover of area, of area now to me people come to me from different areas and he recited this verse that whatever you see it is valueless i have no value in this apart from just the it is allah's being that will remain when the wealth and children will all perish hazrat khalifatul masih awal regarding 
Hazrat Umar's returning from Hajj and when they stopped on the way, Huzaifa had a reason to ask. He was courageous enough to ask. And Hazrat asked Umar that, why, why, why are we doing this? And then he said, when I used to take the camel through here, through this tree, around these plantations, it, it was a different situation. And now I can see that people are even ready to sacrifice their lives, to sacrifice their wealth just by my word and my command. And the second Khalifa that says, says that um, a person who used to, to rear camels to collect firewood and also take them for grazing, he turned to be the conqueror, the conqueror of the area. He became the leader. And on one occasion, he went for Hajj. And when he stopped on the way, the, it was too hot and people were were uncomfortable but no one was able to ask and wonder why are we stopping and one of the friends who was a f close friend and who he used to inquire about any uh, secret affairs and then they told him to ask Hazrat Umar why they were stopping and then he inquired from Hazrat Umar that why, do, why don't we move forward why are we stopping here and then Hazrat Umar in response said that I'm stopping here because I had I was tired when after rearing camels and then my father met me here and then he he started beating me that did I send you to come and just sleep here he was sleeping under this tree I said I was sleeping under this tree but after after accepting the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam God has given me a status that if I tell a hundred thousand people to give up their life for me they would and all this is very clear. It explains the condition of the Sahaba and how, how they followed the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how they learned directly for the, from the Holy Prophet that this was not accorded to anyone else. And the second Khalif Muslim would say, I'm telling you this, that look at the person who used to rear camels. He was given such knowledge which was not given to anyone else look at the time when it was just maybe rearing goats look at the holy prophet وسلم, who read goats and then he was given such knowledge that even the people of uh, europe who are very knowledgeable who are very advanced when they look at hazrat umar they all they remember that a person who reared camels who was a herdsman what is his connection with the leadership and now he becomes a leader and becomes an excellent leader and look at Hazrat, Hazrat Abu Bakr was a businessman and they wonder how Hazrat Abu Bakr was able to run a government and do such excellencies in his life of course all the knowledge was from the Holy Quran and the knowledge given to them through the Holy Quran was not known to anyone else this is a weapon that if it is if it is well sharpened it is enough that you are able to to draw all knowledge of the world from it and all the doors are opened of knowledge of wealth and everything that uh, unstoppable so it is important and incumbent to everyone to recite the holy quran to understand it at all times let's ponder about the simplicity of Hazrat umar and his humility Nufel narrates that uh, once he, he, he addressed Hazrat Umar saying Ya Amir Mu'minin, by God's name we don't see anyone who is just like you and we don't see anyone who is harsh on the monastic hypocrites more than you after the Holy Prophet وسلم, indeed you are the best and Auf also said saying to the person who was addressing the Hazrat Umar and then he said Khuda, in the name of Allah you lying we have seen also who are who are better than him he's and then Hazrat Umar wondered that oh Auf, who was that who was better than me and then Auf said he was Hazrat Abu Bakr and then Hazrat Umar said yes I've said the truth Abu Bakr was better than me and then he referred to the first to the latter person to the first person that of course uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr was a wealthy person and I was just a, a hard person. We also find another another saying where there was a dispute between Hazrat Umar and Hazrat Abu Bakr. Of course Hazrat Umar was a, 
was a short-tempered person. And then Hazrat Abu Bakr decided to move away. And then Hazrat Abu Bakr tried to go, then Hazrat Abu Bakr uh, stopped him. And then he said, you must respond to me first before you go. And then when Hazrat Abu Bakr was about to go, uh, when, when, when he was pulling, then the cloth tore. And then he left. But then Hazrat Abu Bakr felt that he, he will go and report to the Holy Prophet. And then he went behind him. And then he wanted to reach in the court of the Holy Prophet ﷺ together. But on the way, Hazrat um, uh, Abu Bakr disappeared from Hazrat Umar. But Hazrat Umar was thinking that he is going to, Hazrat, to, to the Prophet ﷺ. And then he went to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. And then when he, Hazrat Umar reached there, Hazrat Abu Bakr wasn't there. But because he was remorse of what he had done, then he said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I've committed a folly. I've committed a mistake. I've been harsh to Hazrat Abu Bakr. He wasn't wrong. I was wrong. And then Hazrat Abu Bakr came to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, rather after that someone went to Hazrat Abu Bakr and then said that Hazrat, oh, Abu ba Hazrat Umar has gone to report you to the Holy Prophet and then Hazrat Abu Bakr felt that I should go and then clear myself before the Holy Prophet وسلم, so that it is not one sided story so I should point my view I should present my side of the story when Hazrat Abu Bakr came to the Holy Prophet وسلم, Hazrat Umar was saying that Ya Rasulullah I have confronted Hazrat Umar and I have tore his cloth, I have tore his shirt. And when, when, the whole, when Hazrat Abu, Abu Bakr, when the whole Prophet had this, uh, he, he smiled and said, Oh people, what's wrong with you? When everyone was against me, it was Abu Bakr who supported me when, when I was appointed as a Prophet. Now, why don't you leave me and Hazrat Abu Bakr? And as he was saying this, Hazrat Abu Bakr entered. This is the true, this is the true example of friendship. And instead of saying that it was Umar's mistake, when he entered, Hazrat Abu Bakr looked at his example. When he saw that uh, Hazrat Rasulullah Sallallahu was soft, and then. He didn't want that the Holy Prophet should be hurt because of him. And as he entered, he just, he, he knelt before the Holy Prophet Sallallahu And then he said, it is not Umar's fault. It was my fault. He took it upon himself. This is the example of friendship exhibited by the companions of the Holy Prophet Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is narrated from Hazrat Umar that there was uh, an opinion upon the young children and then it was decided how, what, what to be paid on on young slaves and then Muhammad bin Maslama gave he said he gave he gave a testimony that uh, during the time of the Holy Prophet because someone offended someone when if someone there's a miscarriage caused by someone then they have to, to recompense that whether even if it is a slave and that will be to free a slave Abu Musa al-Ashari also narrates from Hazrat Umar he came and then Assalamu alaikum can I come inside and then Hazrat Umar in the heart he thought He, he inquired to enter and after after a slight pause he and he asked again to enter and then Hazrat Umar he, he he responded in the heart he didn't he didn't respond immediately it was not audible and then he felt that uh, he has asked twice and then he said assalamu alaikum the third time am I allowed to come in then Hazrat Umar narrates saying that when he when he inquired three times to enter then Abu Musa al-Ash'ari turned away when when he didn't see a response after three times has that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari turned back 
Then Hazrat Umar told the guard, what has Abu Musa done? He said he has returned and then Hazrat Umar said, bring him back, call him back to me. When he came back, then Hazrat Umar said that, what have you done to me, Abu Musa al-Ashari? And then Abu Musa said, I'm just acting upon the Sunnah, upon the practice of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu And then he said, Sunnah? You have to, you have to show authority. Otherwise, I have to, I have to reprimand you. And at that time, we were at the group. And then Abu Musa al-Ashari said, O oh, Ansar's group, don't you remember in the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu who, who you, I hope you know the, the hadith of the Holy Prophet better than me. Didn't the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that al istizan thalath, that permission to enter one's house is three times. If you are, uh, if you are accepted to come in, come in, otherwise go back. And when they heard this, they started laughing. Abu Sa'id al Hudri, I looked, I, I raised my hand, my head towards him. And then I said, uh, I, 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 give, I give witness that you said the truth. And then Sa'id came to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and then they came to Azat Umar with Sa'id al-Khudri that yes, there was a hadith the Prophet said three times. And Hazrat Umar wasn't aware of that hadith. And after knowing it, of course, he understood that there is authority to, to search. There's also another narration that once they were sitting around the Holy Prophet Sallallahu with Hazrat, with Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr, and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu stood up. And then he took long to return. And then we, we wondered that, and we, were, we stood up wondering what happened. And then Hazrat Umar said that I, I was uh, very worried. And then I went out to look out for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then I reached at the, uh, at the farm which was of Manunajar, people of uh, Ansar. And then I couldn't find a way in, in the house. And then I, there was a, a canal, there was a stream which was running through the farm. And then he said, And then I crossed and I went to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this, and I said, uh, this was Hazrat Abu Barra narrating that uh, he came, say, you, 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 you stood up and then left us and um, we were worried that you should not cut off from us and I was more, much more worried. That's why I came like, and I was just a fox running around and crossing to find you. And then he said, oh Abu Huraira, G give me my shoes and then he he said that uh, take take these sh these shoes and then if anyone bears witness that there's none worthy of worship except allah and he's very confident he's, he has the authority that this is true then give him the glad, glad tidings that he will be accorded paradise and then i met hazrat abu Bakr first and they said these are the shoes of the holy prophet how are these shoes and then the Holy Prophet has given them as a sign that this is from him, the message is from him that whomever I see and I tell him that there's none worthy of worship except Allah and anyone conforms to this, then I should give him glad tidings of paradise. Then when Hazrat Umar, when he heard this, uh, as he was giving the glad tidings, and then he said, Oh Abu Huraira, go back to the Holy Prophet the, there's no need to tell anyone. And then Hazrat Abu Bakr says, I, I, I was about to cry and I went to, uh, I, I was about to go to the Holy Prophet. And, I, and I was, as I was going, when I returned, I was sad, looking at my face as the Holy Prophet, I wondered what happened. And then he said, I've met Umar, telling him what you told me to do. And then Hazrat Umar uh, pushed me on the shoulder. And then I fell down and told me to return. And then Hazrat Umar, who was walking behind Hazrat Abu Bakr, Abu Huraira, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu wondered, why did you do this? And then he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, may my parents be sacrificed for you. Have you sent Abu Huraira with your shoes to say that anybody who confirms that uh, 
there is none worthy of worship except Allah and anybody who conforms to this will be accorded paradise. Did you send him with this message? And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said yes. But then he said you should not say this. Let's not do this. Otherwise people will start thinking that just a simple declaration of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is enough and they won't practice. Let them also do the practical works, the practical commandments as given so that they become true believers. Otherwise, they will only stick to just reciting La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and they think this is the way to attain paradise. And then the Holy Prophet said, yes, your opinion is right, you're okay. And then said, okay. This was the softness and the humility of that um, as at um, Omar. We've heard before that even Satan feared and ran away from Omar, used to. Hazrat Saad bin Waqas narrates regarding Hazrat Umar that once Hazrat Umar went to, en to enter into the house of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu there were other Quraysh members discussing with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were demanding, they were, they were demanding certain things from the Holy Prophet and they were raising their voices before the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and when he, we wanted to in, in, enter, then Hazrat Umar entered the house. When when Hazrat Umar entered, the, the Holy Prophet was smiling, and the Hazrat Umar said, "Yeah, may Allah keep you smile, smiling all the time." And then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said that there were some people sitting around me. Uh, some ladies were also here, but when they heard your voice. They, they disappeared and they ran away. And then he has almost said that, but they should fear you, not me. And then he said, then there's that Umar raised his voice and say, Oh, ladies, do you fear me and don't fear the Holy Prophet? And then they responded that, yes, that you, you hush. The Holy Prophet is soft, he's kinder than you. And then he said, The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, that even certain when he says that you are walking on a certain route, he will change the route and take another route. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said to Hazrat Omar and Hazrat Aisha furthermore says that one time the Holy Prophet ﷺ was sitting and then we had a scream, we had a, a scuffle and then it was a lady, a lady who was uh, dancing and people were around and then they were making some noises and Hazrat Aisha, the Holy Prophet asked Hazrat Aisha to come and watch and then Hazrat Aisha says that I put my head on the shoulder of the Holy Prophet and I kept watching and then the Holy Prophet said, uh, is it enough? Are you okay? Is it okay? And then he said, no, I'm not yet. Uh, I'm still enjoying. I'm still watching. And then Rasulullah said that I see that even the jinn they, and, and some pigeon and ins, some great people and even small people, big or small, they all fear Hazrat Umar. Hazrat Obeda also narrates that the whole of Hazrat Umar was returning from, the Holy Prophet was returning from a battle. And then one lady said that I had, I made a vow that if God re brings you back uh, safely, I will. I will drum and then I will drum, I, 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 will, I will drum a duff and then celebrate. And then she has that uh, Ali came, he, she kept on drumming the, the drum and then, but when has uh, Abu Bakr came, she, she kept on drumming, but when has that Umar came, she stopped. And then the Holy Prophet said, Oh Umar, even Satan fears you. When Abu Bakr came, she kept drumming. When Ali came, she came drumming. When Hazrat Uthman came, she kept drumming. But when you came, then she ke she stopped immediately. Hazrat Muslim Maud, Hazrat Masih Maud says that the Holy Prophet said Hazrat said to Hazrat Omar that if this if Satan meets you on the way, he will change the way, and this is a proof that. Satan also was scared of Hazrat Umar bin Khattab.
what was the true condition of Hazrat Humar's heart? How can we judge this? We can do this from Abdullah bin Umar that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said. Allah has um, made the heart of Hazrat Umar and his tongue to utter the truth and the truth only. There's also another companion who says that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said that uh, Umar is always with me when he needs me or he's with me whenever we need to be together. And when wherever Umar will be, truth will always be with him. Hazrat Ali says that we used to discuss that uh, tranquility and peace descends upon the heart and the tongue of Hazrat Umar. And it is also narrated that uh, the Holy Prophet Holy Prophet had ordered one of the wife to prepare his uh, his luggage for a journey. And then he told Hazrat Aisha to prepare some food, satu, which is a type of food which was to be prepared. And then he started sieving the grains. <coughs> And, as, uh, and then as that Aisha was inquired that well, what is this? Is the Holy Prophet going somewhere? Is he on, going on a journey? And then he said yes. Is it, is it, a, is it a battle he's going for? And then as that Aisha said he, he only told me to prepare and we, we've been asked and then this is why I'm doing this. After some days he called Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar and then he said someone has given me information about somebody's hypocrisy and God had already told me this and we've already made a treaty with them but they've, they've broken the treaty. But it can't be that we, we shouldn't prepare for them in response and we want to go there, what is your opinion? And as that um, Umar said that you have uh, made a treaty with them and it's your tribe. These are your tribesmen. Now, now are you going to fight and kill your tribesmen you, to, to kill your people? Then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, we're not going to kill our people. We are going to kill those who broke the treaty. We are going to kill the hypocrites. And then when Hazrat Umar was asked, he said, Bismillah. And then he said, I was looking forward to this day and where I was looking to fight the kuffar, the disbelievers. And then the Holy Prophet said that um, the truth always comes from the tongue of Hazrat Umar. And then the, the announcement was done that anybody who believes in Allah and the Holy Prophet should gather in Medina before Ramadan and a group of army was ready to go for, for the fight and they went out to fight. Mentioning about the hierarchy, the status of Hazrat Umar, we find it from Said al Khudri. He says that the Holy Prophet said that among the Iliyin, they will look upon each other and then just looking at the face, the, the entire Paradise will be illuminated. And Hazrat Abu Bakr and Umar among those people who have these brilliant faces. It is also another narration from the Holy Prophet and he, 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 um, Amr bin As was sent in the battle of Zatul Salathil. This is a, a place which is about a, a day's journey from Medina and this is how we used to, to measure distances in those times. And this is from Wad al-Bara and the, in the tribe of Jizam. This is actually, it was a name of uh, a well nearby and the entire area was known by that name. And then he says, when I returned to Hazrat Umar, I said, who, who do you love my most? And then he said, Aisha. And then who? Then he said, um, the father of the, the father of Hazrat Aisha and also after that, who? Then he said, Umar. As that Umar used to come to the companions, whenever the Holy Prophet used to go, he would find 
Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar sitting, and all, all other, other, opinion, other companions. They never used to look at the face of the Holy Prophet. And Umar would look into the face, and others would uh, bow down. It is said that on one occasion, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar, they were sitting in the mosque. One of them was sitting on the right, and another one was sitting on the left. And uh, he was cut touching their hands and then he said we will be raised in this way in the hereafter. Hazrat Abdullah bin Tarab narrates that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it saw Hazrat Abu Bakr and Umar and said that these are like two ears, they are set of pairs, they are like a set of ears. And it is said that Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar said to Hazrat Abu Bakr that oh the person who is better the best after the holy prophet sallam. and as abu bakr said that if you say this i have had the prophet sallam, saying that no person has seen the rising of the sun who is better than hazrat umar and then it is he said The, the Hazrat Umar responded and said that um, I will be raised and then Hazrat Abu Bakr will be raised and all other people and then I will wait for some people until I, I get to the place of Haramain. Hazrat Abdullah bin Mas'ud also narrates that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a person from among the people of paradise is coming to you. Then Hazrat Abu Bakr came and also he said another person also is coming a person from the people of paradise then Hazrat Abu uh, Umar arrived it is also narrated that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu regarding Hazrat Umar said uh, regarding Hazrat Abu Bakr he said that these will be the leaders of the elderly in paradise apart from the prophets and it is said Hazrat, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you should follow these after me. Hazrat Sa'id Al-Khudri narrates that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, every prophet has two envoys, the divine envoys, and there are also two worldly envoys. Uh, from the two envoys, Jibralin and, and Mikail, those are the divine envoys, and on earth is Abu Bakr and Umar. Another companion says that once we were sitting around the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and then he said, I don't know how long I'm going to stay amongst you. But if you follow these two who will be after me, pointing towards Abu Bakr and Umar, if you follow these, you will be, you will be safe and okay. It is said that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said on one day that did anyone see, see any dream? And then one companion said, yes, I saw a dream. I, I saw like there was um, a scale, a balance. Uh, there was a scale and then when he was when we were weighed as Abu Bakr was very heavy and when Abu Bakr and Umar were, were weighed as Abu Bakr was was heavier and then after some time uh, the Mizan the scale was taken and then after that the Holy Prophet was very the, he changed and he was very sorry after all this and then the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that of course this is uh, the kingdom of Tami will be given to someone who Allah wishes. On one occasion Hazrat Ali was standing on the pulpit and said shouldn't, tell, shouldn't I tell you about the person regarding whom the Holy Prophet ﷺ will, will be the best after me and then he said is Hazrat Abu Bakr and then he said all people shouldn't shouldn't I tell you about the best person regarding whom the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said and gave his authority that is Omar and Hujayf also said that I've heard Hazrat Ali saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the best in this Ummah is that Abu Bakr and then Omar of course I'll carry on with the same discussion even in future it is still ongoing about Hazrat Omar I will still continue with the topic of Hazrat Omar and his excellencies uh, but uh, after today, after the Friday sermon, I will be offering some funeral prayers in, abs in absentia. The first one is that of Kamran Ahmad, son of Nasir of Peshawar. He passed away on 9th of November. The opponents, the enemies uh, killed him. They fired into onto his office and he was killed there. He was uh, 
44 years old. He was working in a factory as an accountant. A person who was armed came to the office and then started firing. And then he received four bullets in his body and then he died on the spot. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. Of course, the enemy escaped, the assailants escaped, but uh, the Ahmadiyyad came into his house through his father, his father's father, the grandfather, Fateh Din Sahib of Dani, of Dani Wangar. He used to live in that place. And this was in Kadian where he accepted us, uh, Ahmadiyyad in 1902. That's when he accepted Ahmadiyyad at the hands of the Prince Messiah, alayhi after getting a shop, they made an office and of course they were asked to move away from the place because of because being Ahmadis and then when they went to another place and when they went there they were also followed by the enemies and they were also moved from there even a big crowd there was a agitation which was raised against Ahmadis in that time and uh, they say we had never seen such a big crowd of en enemies trying to attack Ahmadis. And the, the matter who had worked for a long time as an accountant, he has also been an accountant for the, for the Jamaat as well. Of course, at that time when they were helped, they said, we cannot leave you to go. You can even still continue to come back come to us and of course when they heard about his martyrdom his death even the enemies in the enemy areas people were also touched by the death of this member and then one occasion he came very late to the house and he was asked why did you come late rather he said there was a nun member the wife who needed some blood and they, they needed blood in the family and then I had to give blood and I went to give them blood because I gave them blood because they are not financially okay and this is not their role and it's our role to perform such roles. He was always forward, he was forthcoming in all affairs. He would even stand in sensitive areas whenever it was very very crucial he would be there whenever he was advised that uh, we should go move away we should because it, it would be tough of course before his death he was very he was always the first one to pay on time all his dues and on one occasion there was he, he was gig distributing pamphlets and then he was arrested by police he was freed the next day and and uh, before his death he saw a dream that an elderly lady was cleaning his house and then he said i'm preparing and cleaning this house because the fourth caliph is going to come here and uh, the fourth caliph came and then took the hand of the deceased of the matter and then said we shall be together and stay with me we have to be with me he by, by grace of allah he was a mercy he was a very respectable individual of where he lived he was a very kind person to the poor and who had a special loyalty towards khilafat he's been survived by the mother and the wife with three children one is 13 years 11 and also an eight year old may allah be the protector of the entire family especially the children left behind by the matter and may allah give them the courage and the fortitude to bear the loss and may allah raise the status of the deceased the mother is uh, sick she's suffering from cancer please pray for her may allah have mercy upon her I'll carry on with uh, Dr. Dr. Nober and Aisha, who passed away in an accident in uh, in the United States, in Milwaukee. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Mirza Mugheri was uh, 35 years old. 
the great grandfather was a, a companion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the grandmother, Master Abdurrahman, was the father of the grandmother. Even the great grandmother was uh, saw the whole pro the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They were companions, and uh, in 2012 they migrated to the United States. And at the 17 years old, he joined the the system of uh, wasiyat. He also had an opportunity to serve as the guide, the l local leader of in Khudam Lamadia, and also he contributed in buying. Rather, he was the highest contributor in towards buying a center in his place. Mr. Nasir Sahib is the is the brother Nadia is also a sister and is be survived by two brothers Aisha the wife who passed away alongside him was a a daughter of a member of our community in Japan And our our missionary Said Ibrahim's sister, who works in Japan, and uh, Madiat came to their house through Shasab in 1930. They accepted uh, Madiat at the hand of the second Khalif, Rilatalan. Like I've already said, that uh, she passed away in an accident with the hus with uh, the husband but the husband died first and she passed away the second day she was a very active member of the mta international and she used to translate my sermons in japanese and also subtitling in the japanese language she's been survived by the father sajjad ahmad and Dures Amin Said, and he's been survived by th three brothers and three sisters. The brother Ibrahim Saab is a, a missionary in Japan, and he says that she used to help me in so many ways. She helped me in translating the Dures Amin, and, and I was one, wondering, being a pharmacist, how could she be able to translate with me? in a very excellent way. There's also a, a diary which I, I by accident have been able to go through and on one page she used to write that uh, my worldly life and my spiritual life and she would uh, note down what she does on the spiritual side and also on the worldly life and there were some notes Rather, she dedicated most of her time towards serving religion. She would hear all the commandments of the Caliph of the time and would try to work upon those directives and would also urge the brothers and sisters to do the same. She would remind them of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, the teachings of Islam. May Allah forgive the deceased and may Allah raise her status in paradise. I'll also talk about Chaudhry Nasir Ahmad of Karachi, who was uh, secretary, financial secretary. Chaudhry Nasir Saab was the father. He passed away in Alilai Huan Rajun. He was leading prayer and because of a sudden heart attack, cardiac arrest, he collapsed in the second racket. And by grace of Allah, he was a Mosi. And the Masih Ma'ud has declared a death in prayer to be a, a very, a very, very honorable death. And even the father who ret who worked for tw for 25 years, who worked as Wakil Ma Wakil Z Z Ra'at for 25 years. Even the brother is working as a wazir in the treasury. He's been survived by the wife, Nusrat Nasir Sahiba. He had no issue, he had no children. 
and he moved in 1972 to Karachi and he's been working and he's been able to serve in different capacities. There's also another member who from Dar for, from Rabwa in Alilai when Rajon. He was from Patan Guda Gudaspur. He migrated to to Rabwa. First he was in Sialkot, then sent the family background was from the Shia sect. And when they accepted Ahmadiyat, uh, then the mother-in-law said, told to the daughter that your husband has uh, revolted, has apostated, and then you should come back, leave him and come. And then responded to the family that now I've become a true Muslim by accepting Ahmadiyat. I used to only offer the Fajr prayers, but now I offer all the five daily prayers and offer the Tajud as well. I cannot return. And after 14 years, went to meet the mother and of course the mother was still adamant but she never returned to the family as requested rather remained with the jamaat and she was a very sincere lady she was a mosi she was survived by four sons and three three daughters one of them is serving in Sierra Leone and Abdul Khalik Nayar is a He's also serving enough by grace of God. He's missionary in church. He, 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 he was also, he worked as an Amir as well. They were not able to, to offer the fuel to, to go for the burial of the mother. May Allah forgive all the deceased. May Allah forgive her and raise her status in paradise. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, when I say no, when I stop for a home. When no man obey, when I talk وَمَنْ يُضْلِلُ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِبْعَادُ اللَّهِ رَحِمَكُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَيَتَّقِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْيِ يَعِظُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَادْعُوهُ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ Thank <laughs> you.